生。Sky gazers travelled from across the world to the Isle of Lewis. To see one of nature's most majestic sights. A total eclipse is a rare phenomenon. And here in the Outer Hebrides, where there was 98% coverage, the excitement was palpable. Oh, it's a quite an epic occasion. Spring equinox, solar eclipse, new moon, super new moon. Why not? It's a special place. It's a special time of the year. That's brilliant, yes. We're, we're just delighted to be here. It's uh, fantastic. We travelled the distance, so yeah, we're quite happy. It's supposed to work when you get the shadow in behind it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice one-off, it's a rare thing, it's quite a social occasion as well, so, yeah, you know, so that's why the Calgary Stones are actually here, that's the, that was the real reason for it, but yeah, it's nice to get the opportunity, yeah. nice to give this wee guy a chance to see it as well. Only a few places would experience a total eclipse, a magical moment of complete coverage. But in the Faroe Islands and Svalbard in Norway, the conditions were less than perfect. With intermittent cloud, you could just make out the moon sliding almost imperceptibly across the sun. The diurnal certainty of life disrupted, swallowed one chunk at a time. An eerie twilight then fell across the land birdsong was silenced by the crepuscular darkness and the temperature dropped by a few degrees. And for just a few minutes the faint circling light of the sun's corona glowed dimly behind a lunar blot. The moon's shadow now, the total, the umbral part of the moon's shadow, the very centre of the moon's shadow now passing right over that tiny island of Svalbard off the coast of Norway, a principality of Norway, where uh, hundreds or if not thousands of people have gathered and braved the cold to see this experience. Uh, the next time anyone will be able to see anything like this on the surface of the Earth will be in 2017, and they're going to need to go over to America to get a view. Oh, look, just up there. Just up there we can actually see a glimpse of it. We've just got a little break in the cloud and we have got just the very tail end of totality. The sun is now poking through. So now we're seeing a bright flash of light from the sun coming through the valleys on the moon. The moon's um, rugged surface there allowing light to spill through a beautiful diamond ring. Here we see a ring of light that's very faint and one big flash on one side like a, like a lovely engagement ring in the sky. I enjoyed it. It was nice to be part of it and there was one moment where the shadows were quite dramatic and that was a nice awe moment. I thought that was incredible. I came up from Kent as well and it was the colours at the time of the eclipse and also the fact it's the uh, spring equinox today so it really was that balance between everything. It was absolutely incredible. The eclipse is a divine sight. And across Britain, school children gazed in wonder at the skies. Their tiny eyes protected by special glasses they'd made during class. This is so important to them. This isn't extracurricular, this is central to their education. It's, what, a, what a wonderful opportunity for them. This eclipse is a solar eclipse, so what happens is the moon goes in front of the sun, so where we are now. Um, we'll, we will get about a few bit of darkness. Obviously none of us have ever seen it before because as we said the last one was in 1999. It is easy to see why the ancients were fascinated and terrified by this celestial event. In ancient China it was thought a dragon was devouring the sun. The Greeks believed the gods were angry and death and destruction was on its way. 
it's worth remembering that uh, when the moon formed uh, about three and a half billion to four billion years ago, it was much closer to the Earth. It used to orbit the Earth every six hours. It would have been an enormous object in the sky. It's been receding at a rate of, uh, well now, about four centimetres every year. Thousands of years later in Greenwich, science and rationalism have replaced superstition. Hundreds of amateur astronomers lined up to analyse the eclipse, tablets and telescopes at the ready. There are a few mechanisms in place. Right now today, on um, any other day, the moon is normally too high or too low uh, compared to the sun and it won't block the sun out in any way. But today we're lucky enough to be in the shadow of the moon for uh, about two hours altogether. That wonderful uh, ratio of distance and size is just something we don't experience anywhere else in the solar system. Uh, so to have this is quite special. Uh, and it's something that uh, as well we rely on the moon being a little bit closer at the moment as well, which means for those folks in the Faroe Islands and Svalbard Islands getting to have the, uh, the whole disk of the sun covered. Across much of Europe, North Africa and the Middle East, life stopped and eyes swiveled up to the heavens to witness the events. The event has a special significance to Egypt and in particular to the place we are in, to in, the, in the pyramids area. Uh, the, the, the sun is, is a god in the, in the ancient Egyptian culture and uh, we can see uh, several uh, places uh, throughout Egypt. We can see the line up of the, of the sunrise and the sunset with the, with the temples. So we can see uh, a very interesting link between the sun and the ancient Egyptian culture. On the continent, offices emptied as workers abandoned their desks. This was too special to miss. But whilst there was excitement, there was also disappointment. Blankets of cloud eclipsed the eclipse in many places, spoiling one of nature's most unusual sights. In areas though with a clear view, it was spectacular. A near total eclipse like this will not bless the skies above Britain again until 2026.